Alright guys, it's baritone time. Uh, this is a euphonium, not a baritone, but uh, they're they're basically the same thing. We do not have a baritone, but they're the same. You don't have to worry about the di the difference. Doesn't really uh, doesn't really matter too much unless you are a I guess a snob in that point um, or a college student or a professor. It doesn't really matter. For the high school band world, we all play baritone slash euphonium anyway. So what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to refresh us all on how to play this instrument. Uh, I'm not going to go in these videos in depth on like reading music or um, rhythms or anything like that. Like I'm not going to teach that stuff. This is just going to be about your practicing and remembering how to play the horn and remembering how to get it together. Everything else... Uh, you can review on your own, or maybe I'll do an assignment later on down the road that has that stuff, or like an activity, but this time is only for us to be playing. I don't want to be spending the whole time lecturing. And I'll be talking a lot, but I'll be playing hopefully just as much. So, playing on the mouthpiece. It's a buzz. It's not a just blowing through it. Gross. Um, <laughs> you need to be buzzing into the mouthpiece. Ah. You should be able to buzz all over the place. You might not be able to get that far right now, but as long as you can maintain a buzz, then you're good. Okay. The high notes will be harder to hit uh, for some of you. Low notes will be some harder to hit for some of you. Just know that it's all about the air. Slower air makes slower makes lower notes. Faster air makes higher notes. Okay, difference between this and this. It's just higher air or faster air. Okay, we're gonna start right now with uh, the first five notes in our yellow essential elements bar. We're gonna try to remember those. Okay, so remember when we play the baritone, we don't bring our face to it. We're not down here like this. You sit up straight. You bring the horn to you. Okay, and uh, the first note is gonna be an F. Open fingers, no fingers down, F concert. Right, beautiful. Right in the middle of the range. E flat is next, you have one finger. Keep going, as you go down, as you go down, you're gonna use slower air to get those lower notes out cleaner, okay? Down to D, one and two, D. One and three is C, right? And then your final note that we need to worry about today is B flat. That's everything open. It's like your F, but it's lower. If you're having a hard time getting that note, drop your jaw like you're surprised. And then just buzz through it. You'll get there. Um, once you understand how it works, it's really, it's like home. It's so comfy to play it. To warm up here, now that we've got those notes, we're going to play the Tone Builder in number 52 of the Yellow Book. Um, when we do this, we are focusing on our tone. Tone Builder. Makes sense, right? You're working on your tone. That means that you don't want to just lazily play. You don't want to sit back in your chair, have your baritone sitting. No, we don't want that. We want everything to be as good as possible. If you practice badly, you will play badly. So let's sit up straight. Let's use a lot of air to get a really clean tone out of the top of this horn. This is such a beautiful instrument if it's played correctly. If it's played badly, it's just, it sounds fat. We don't want that. Okay, let's give it a shot. Tone builder, I'm looking for a good, clean tone. I was happy with it. Um, I've played baritone for years. It's one of my better horns uh, for me. So if I move too fast, you let me know and I'll slow it down for you and try to hit some stuff that I've missed. But uh, I'll be moving faster on baritone than I will on anything else. 
except for trombone because it's just something I'm really comfortable with. Um, that being said, I still could use some tone work here. It's still a little fuzzy, and it's because I haven't played in a long time. Uh, it's been about four or five months since I've touched a horn, any kind of horn, uh, really, except for trombone. So uh, I'm going to try it again. We're going to play it same way, a little cleaner, with, uh, with a little bit more air support, trying to get those notes out as uh, pretty as possible. Here we go. Yeah, good. Now, now we've got that. Now that we've played for a couple minutes, we got our lips a little bit more uh, in the mood to play. We're going to tune this puppy. So I'm going to get my phone with the tuner app. And how this thing works is that the needle is going to go back and forth depending on if I'm sharp or flat. We're going to start on an F. And if I'm right on, it's going to be right in the middle. It's going to glow white. It's going to read as an F. Here we go. So it's reading over here. That means it's reading sharp. So we're going to, no valves are down, so we don't have to fool with these. We're going to pull this main slide, this main tuning slide out. Pull it out just a little bit. It was here. Pull it out just a little bit. Try to get that F in tune. Let's hear it again. It's closer now. Let's pull it again. Don't want to pull too far, but let's pull it again. Here we go. So I'm trying to get it closer by lifting it down. I'm going to pull it just a little bit more. Uh, if I pull it too much, then there's obviously something wrong with the way I'm playing it. But maybe it's just out of tune. Let's try it one more time. Right on. Let's move on. E flat. So E flat is reading flat. Now, that must be in the horn. I must have pulled out too much because none of my valve slides are pulled out. So I'm going to push in a little bit. And I'm just going to adjust my playing in my face so that all of my notes can be in tune. Let's try the F again. So that's just real sharp on this horn for some reason. Pull out a little bit more and uh, we'll see what we can do. Maybe pulling these out will help. Let's hear an E flat. Right on. D. Right on. C. Whoa, C is sharp. Let's pull the C out quite a bit. Still a little sharp. Try one more time. And B flat. flat still reading real sharp. Um, there might be some inconsistencies with the horn. It might just be the way I'm playing. I'm going to leave my tuner up so I can work on tuning it while I'm playing it. That is that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, here we go. 52 one more time and then we'll move on. So it's getting a little better as I'm playing. I think that my lips just weren't quite worked out enough. And that's why we got to play a little bit before we tune. We don't tune right at the beginning because we're still a little um, a little stiff. Okay? Let's move on to the rhythm etude. Rhythm etude. We're working on just the rhythm and the tonguing. Playing, playing it cleanly. We're doing ta, 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 ta when we play. Okay, we're going to start on B flat. We don't really want to go fast, we just want to make sure that we can play the rhythm correctly and we play with a clean tonguing sound. Rhythm A2. Yeah. 
So I fudged a note there. I'm going to try it again. There's really no excuse for me to have messed that note up. I think that I just got a little lazy. Let's try it one more time. I want to play it as well as I can before I move on. So notice that I slowed that one down a little bit to try to focus a little bit more on playing it. Now that I've got it, I played it all the way through. Maybe I can speed it up and see if I can't do it a little faster. I still had a little bit of a double buzz there on the D. That means that my uh, my horn jumped the octave when I didn't want it to. Um, I'm gonna play it one more time. Try to get that right. And I don't want to. I don't want to uh, halfway anything. I want to do it all right. Here we go. Nailed it. Okay, moving on. We're gonna skip the rhythm rap. That's something we do in class as a as a team. We don't need to do that while we're at home practicing. The rhythm etude is enough of a rhythm workout for us. Let's go to the corral. Usually, we do the corral as a class to try to tune together and try to listen and balance and make sure we're all on the same page sound-wise. But that's not what it's for today. Today, we're working on having a solid tone across some sustained notes, working on our musicality. That means following the written rules, uh, the written instructions, the andante, the piano, the crescendo, the mezzo forte following all that stuff, and making it sound good. I could play all these notes real simply, and it's there, but that's not what I want. I want to make it sound as good as possible. So we're going to play the crowd. We're really going to focus on being in tune, and we're going to focus on uh, playing the right notes, and we're going to focus on having a solid, clean tone. Corral. He's a lot of air. Blow all the way through the horn. It's a lot of horn to fill up. You can't be shy. Here we go. Um. Yeah, I think I did a pretty good job with that. I'm happy with how that went. Uh, Corral sounded pretty good to me. And like I said, I have a lot more experience on the baritone, so uh, it would be a little bit easy for me to get through some of this stuff than it would be on, say, the flute or the alto saxophone or what have you. We're going to go on to the uh, repertoire list that we've been doing. Number 34 is what I start on with all of these uh, lessons so far. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, number 34, doodle all day. It's on page 9. I'm oh, sorry. I'm a little, a little tired. It's the end of the week. It feels like a Friday to me. Uh, page 9, doodle all day, number 34. We, When we sight read something or when we look at something, we want to make sure that we've got all of the things that might throw a monkey wrench into our lives. Uh, this one looks like it's pretty easy. Quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. The only thing that's a little different here is that in measure five, we have an A natural. That is second valve. We had one in our corral. I didn't talk about it. Second valve, A natural. It's lower than your B flat. Okay, don't miss that. That's in measure five and measure six. Here we go. Doodle all day. Give it a shot. Make sure we get we breathe on the uh, breath marks. that so some of the mistakes that I made there some of my notes what is that thing? some of my notes were a little fuzzy um, I think it's just that I'm trying to rebuild my tone it's been a long time since I played baritone uh, and also I was dancing a little bit and you can see that when you dance 
while you play, your tone will suffer because it's moving around your face. And uh, it's not a bad thing to dance when you play to get into it, but um, you want to make sure that it's still your embouchure and your lips are still attached to the instrument the same way so that you don't your tone doesn't suffer because of it. We're going to try to do it all day one more time. Uh, I'm not going to stop dancing because I was enjoying myself. So uh, I'm just going to make sure that I do it a little bit cleaner this time. Here we go. Do it all day one more time. <laughs> Yeah, not too bad. I'm happy with it. There wasn't too much there that I thought was unacceptable. Lord. Yeah. We're going to move on. Let's go on to a tisket, a tasket. Talking about this, we've got a pickup note on beat four. This is number 36 on page nine in the yellow book. We've got a pickup note on beat four at the beginning. Notice that because we have a pickup note, the last measure only has three beats in it because that fourth beat is up at the top. Um, otherwise, we've got a high G in here. I would say a high G. It's a medium G. High for you guys, not for me. Uh, we got a G here. It is top space of the staff. It's one and two. Valves one and two, just like your low G. We haven't done yet, but high G. Let's hear it. Okay. It's real nice. We don't want to miss that. That is in measure number three. I don't think there's anything else in there. Nope, just that. It should be good. Let's give it a shot. A tisk get a tasket. Okay, so I, I'm going to stop there. I talked about that G, and you know what happened? I thought I was going to be able to do it without putting too much effort into it. But I didn't put enough air in, and did you hear it buzzed? It didn't sound so good. We're going to try it again. I'm going to make sure that G really speaks this time. I want the G to come out clearly. It's written there for a reason. And if we miss the note, uh, then it was written for no reason. Let's do it right. Here we go. <laughs> I was so focused on getting the G that I let the I let the uh, D at the end fall away. Let's really focus. I'm going to zoom in and do it right. Yeah, so when I'm working on woodwinds in these videos, I'm typically working on remembering fingerings, uh, making sure that I can get the squeaks out of my instruments. But when I'm working with the brass instrument, I know the fingerings. I know the fingerings. They're there. I've played them for a long time. Trumpet a little bit less, but I know the baritone fingerings. Um, it's not the basic technique stuff like that that I'm fooling with. I'm worried about having a good sound. Um, if you can play every note perfectly, but you sound bad, what is the point? That's my that's where I'm at right now. I know the notes, and I know how to read them. I'm really good at reading rhythm. Um, I just need to make sure that I get the tone correct on the baritone. That's what we're going to work on a lot with me in here. And even if you're, even if that's not your big issue, if you've got a more beautiful tone than me, then more power to you. Um, but I'm going to be working on some fingering stuff in here, too, so we can help with that. Uh, I hope that this stuff is helpful to you. I'm going to move on, actually. I don't want to stop yet playing this. I've, I've only gone for about 20 minutes. I want to get to the 30-minute mark. So I'm going to keep going through the book. Let's see what else we've got. Let's flip to some random page. Let's do some sight reading. 
Oh, Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. Oh, Susanna is a is a folk song for America, and uh, everyone should know it. We're going to sight read it. When I sight read, I look to make sure that, like I said earlier, there's nothing that's going to stump me. The only thing I see on this is that, yes, we have another set of pickup notes on beat four. They are four and one. Okay? The B flat, C to the D. Four and one. And it's the same thing with the second line. We got pickup notes into the second line. But otherwise, it's just quarter notes. And really, we're just going up and down. Our first six notes, B flat to G, is the only range issue there. So uh, this should be pretty simple. I should be able to nail it first try, but let's see. You never know. I could blow it. Ha! Blow it. Here we go. 44. Oh, yes. This is number 44 in the yellow book, if you want to follow along. Now, technically, that's not sight reading because I've heard the song before and I know what it sounds like and I've played it on a lot of different instruments in the fast past so I know the pattern let's go to something I don't know quite so well but I thought I did a pretty good job about nah, let's get those oh. <whistles> camp town races now I know what that one is that's by the same guy Stephen Collins Foster Baccarol okay o Offenbach that'll work Bach rolls number 68 on page 15. Uh, this one's cool because we are in 3 4. That means there's 3 beats per measure instead of 4 beats. So we're not counting in 1, 2, 3, 4. We're counting in 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. More dancey. Um, this one doesn't have any weird notes in it. it is, the range is only about 3 notes. But uh, there's a crescendo in it. Let's make sure we do. And there's a repeat sign. Bach roll. Here we go. And make sure we stick to the beat pattern. One, two, three. Easy enough. It was pretty simple. I should have picked a harder one. Let's keep going. Ah, oh, what else is there in here? I wanted something hard. I know it's EE e. Book One, and I'm a grown up musician, so nothing's too hard for me in this book, but this is it. Banana Boat Song, a Caribbean folk song, number 91, page 18. This one's got a DC Alfine. That means that you're going to go back to the top, and then you're going to end where it says. Fine. Okay, let's give this one a shot. I should be able to do this one. Anything weird in here before I go? We are. We have a high B flat down to a low B flat. That is the range, just one octave, not too hard. Um, eighth notes, mm -mm, nothing too crazy. Let's roll it. Here we go. Land a boat song. Moderato, medium speed. <laughs> fun I like that one that'll be my set rating for the day next week since I am a little bit more experienced at this particular horn um, I'm gonna run through the stuff that we're doing in class but then when I get to my specific practice routine I'm gonna do some harder stuff maybe I'm gonna run some scales that I don't know I'm gonna run some exercises that are harder for me just so that you can see how I'm choosing to get better 
uh, at my instrument at my level. If you only practice at the same level forever, then you're never going to get better. I know this stuff. I'm moving on to something harder. Um, but still watch the videos because it will help you. It'll help you learn how to play that stuff and it'll help you get better. Uh, I hope these things are helpful to you. I hope that you watch them and that you are engaged and that you are playing along with me. And uh, if you have any questions, please talk to me. If you think I'm going too fast for you, I will help you out specifically. But uh, these videos are just a practice log for us. I want you to see how I'm working so that you know how you should work. Everyone's practice routine is different. Um, but this is a good way to go about it. Warm up and then play your stuff. If you don't warm up, then you're going to be re pretty rusty. You'll play your, uh, you play your repertoire music. It's not going to sound good. So make sure you warm up, make sure you tune, make sure that you put some effort into practicing. Just sitting down and uh, fingering through some stuff is not going to get you there, right? Uh, I've got nothing else for you. I will come back next week with another baritone video. I'm moving on to the tuba. So catch the next video for a tuba lesson if you're interested. I know I've only got really one tuba player right now, but if you want to, I've got three tubas at the school. One is brand new. That's what I'm going to be playing on. I'm happy to teach a tuba player. Watch tuba video. It'll be fun, especially if you're a baritone player. It's really easy to switch. Uh, I will see you guys next week. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.